Rub up your engines! Well, as I've said numerous times, the American public don't really want electric vehicles. You notice Ford is going to be making less F-150 electric lightnings or electric pickups. But guess what? The Lincoln Aviator production for Ford is increasing. February 2024, they're increasing how many they're going to make, right? Big monster gas guzzlers. They're making more of them. They're electric trucks. They're making less of them. Gee, maybe there's a trend going on here, you know? I mean, Americans get carried away with giant vehicles. They all Always have, right? But it turns out they don't want giant electric vehicles because they cost too much and they're too inconvenient. Things Americans want, they want big and they want convenience, right? So that's why they're so big too, you know? They go to the fast food, get the big giant meals, right? It's big, it's convenient, right? That's what Americans want. If you opened up a diet fast food chain, you'd go bankrupt in this country. <laughs> Just like people that are making electric vehicles, a lot of those companies are on the verge of bankruptcy or have already gone bankrupt, right? So this facade that they're going to make electric vehicles, well, follow the facts, follow the money. They're making more big gas guzzlers and less electric cars because people don't want the electric cars. And Ford's showing the proof of it, right? Less electric trucks, but more giant aviators, right? Well, you might have seen that viral TikTok where the lady says, I I took my niece out of the mechanic and he's not allowed to work on it. This lady bit a post on TikTok and she said, if you have a newer vehicle, a Nissan Chrysler Subaru, you're going to want to stay for this. 28,000 miles. She needed a brake job, which is bad enough, right? And they were the rear brakes that are electronic. So she took her car to a repair shop and the mechanic said, we don't know why your brakes are this bad, but your back brakes are worn out. She got an expensive quote on all the different mechanics at three shops said Nissan Chrysler Subaru and Mercedes have built their vehicles to be returned to dealer. They put proprietary software on the vehicles. If the repair shops don't pay for the software, they can't do anything in your car other than oil change, from what I understand. She said, I didn't even realize this was a thing. So she went to a Nissan dealer, and of course, they wanted 270 bucks more than a normal brake job because it's electronic brakes, right? Numero uno. It's true to some extent, but, you know, the guys that she went to, they should have that equipment. I have that equipment. Any good mechanic, we have to pay for it. Yeah, and that's why things cost more because we have to pay. The scumbags that really started off were Chrysler. They put a fancy hold that you can only get the basic information on the car with a scan tool unless you pay extra money to get a special adapter and get the authentication that you can work on that car as a mechanic. I had to join the stupid website and pay them money each year and then pay extra for the software and the plug. I have it. You know, any good mechanic's going to have it. They're going to be able to work on it. But yes, you're going to pay more. When they start adding this electronic crap, that's the main reason they add electronic crap. It isn't that it's better. It's got two things going for it. It's cheaper to make and then it's harder to fix. So they could put in software that a lot of mechanics will say, well, I'm not going to buy the upgrade this year. Screw it. It costs too much money. So if you got later model car like her, a lot of times only the dealers will work on it because the other guys are like, I'm not going to pay for that software for a couple of years. The new one shouldn't break yet, so I'll wait till they're a few years old. Then I'll buy that software where the dealers already have it. So yeah, you know, they're all scumbags. They're just out to get your money and they'll do it any way they can. Find the companies that don't do this, like Toyota, and buy them. Don't do it through these other companies that are ripping you off. Just like GM said a while back, we're going to be a software company. We're making a fortune selling subscriptions to software, blah, blah, blah. Well, that went right down the toilet. They fired a bunch of their software engineers because they found out really quickly that Americans, if they pay 45 grand for a car, they expect to be able to access everything in that car. Not, well, if you want to access this, pay another thousand dollars a year, pay $450 a year for this, for this. No, Americans don't go for that. Greed can only go so far. And how do we stop greed? You don't buy their products. They have that in. You complain and say, I'm not going to buy this product. You know what happens if the dealers go to the go to the manufacturer and say, will you stop trying to rake people with money on this because nobody's buying our cars. Toyota doesn't do it. We can't do it because then they'll all go and buy Toyotas. They're already buying them. They'll even go more if you keep trying to rip them off. We have the power if you use it. Don't buy their products. If you get one like this, then it's a problem. Complain, complain, complain. And guess what? Eventually, they'll have to change or people won't buy their products. Corporations sell things. If they can't sell them, they go out of business. And it comes down to something that simple. Now, here's one of the reasons you might not want to go to one of those oil change joints. You know, the discount oil change joints. There was a woman in Oklahoma. She took in her Subaru for an oil change. 
I said, okay, it's ready, a lady, and she backs it up, and she hears this horrible noise, and her car doesn't move, right? Well, it turns out the idiots at the oil change place, instead of draining her engine oil, they drained the fluid in her CVT transmission, and it wouldn't even move. These guys are so stupid, they couldn't even figure out how to put the fluid back in. So, they made her pay to tow it to the Subaru dealer and get it fixed. And they said, well, you're going to have to uh, apply for a refund from uh, the oil change company, blah, 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 blah. Right? Now, that shows you why you don't want to go to one of these discount oil trades. They have idiots working there. In Houston, I've been at some, and half the workers had just got out of the Huntsville prison. It was the only job they could get because they would hire anybody. And they would often do stuff like this. They'd strip the drain plugs. Then you'd have to replace the oil pan. I mean, you got to watch out going to those places. This particular one was called Take 5 Oil. I mean, there's millions of these discount oil places. But the thing is, let's... Put on our thinking caps. Say you bought a brand new car. The average American brand new car is forty-five grand. Do you want these idiots working on your car that you paid fifty thousand bucks? They're making minimum wage. They don't know what the heck they're doing. You really don't. This is why I make my videos. I show you how to do it yourself. It's not that hard to do. Then you can buy quality oil, quality oil filter, get it done right. You go to these discount oil places. A lot of them sell what's called bulk oil, and it's just these giant containers. And who knows what's inside them, right? It's not the highest quality. Oil, right? They charge you tons extra for that. So I say, buy it yourself and do it yourself. Or you have your son or grandson, whoever, do it for you. Because if you go to these discount places, you don't know what's going to happen. Like this woman, they could have destroyed her car if she would have driven it too far. It would have destroyed itself. You run a car with no fluid in the transmission, even a few miles, it can destroy it. Luckily, it, it was so empty, it just went out, and made a noise, wouldn't even move. It may have done some damage. All the Subaru dealer did was fill it up, and it's working now. But it could have damaged it down the line. So. Be leery where you get your oil change. Be very leery. Because some of these places, man, that's what you're going to get. And then they're going to put too much oil in your engine because they think that's empty. And there's no oil in your transmission. I've seen this over and over. Keith Andrus says, Scotty, I got a 2013 Charger. 97,000 miles. I replaced all the injectors 2,000 miles ago. How often should I add injector cleaner? Thanks. For the injectors themselves, you should never have to add cleaner, really. Gasoline is a very good cleaner. Under high pressure in the injectors, it keeps things clean. If injectors are made poorly, as in the case of your Dodge, right? 10-year-old vehicle, 97,000 miles, injectors should last a lot longer than that. They all clean themselves as they drive down the road. If they're made right, they can basically last almost forever. I've seen Toyotas with half a million miles, still with the original injectors on it, right? The problem with many modern cars are they're GDI, gasoline direct injectors. And instead of spraying the gas over the intake valve, they spray them directly into the engine. The intake valves will carbon up. Right? The injectors won't because they've got gasoline spraying through them, and that's a very good cleaner. Unless you got a real clunker of an engine that's just wearing out and the piston rings are shot, then you're going to need another engine anyways. Normally, you never need fuel injector cleaner to clean the fuel injectors themselves. Cleaning the valves, piston rings, yes. But the injectors are pretty much self-cleaning if they're made correctly. Like I say in Toyotas, they can last forever. Well, GM has come up with a real-world hydrogen-powered truck. There it is. You can see it's rather light. Large. There's a giant container in the back to hold all the hydrogen. It's under high pressure, right? And one reviewer said that this is just ridiculous. Who would buy this stupid thing? As the reviewer said, it generates enough electricity to power 250 typical American homes for a few minutes, just not at the same time. It's just total nonsense. They come up with these ridiculous figures, right? GM, of course, calls it a hydrogen-based worksite ecosystem. Well, let's break it down. It gets 300 miles, supposedly. The Silverado EV is rated at 450 miles. So, it's not going all that far. A commercial truck that doesn't go far. That makes a lot of sense, right? It's got a three-foot bed for the customers. Three feet. What are you going to do in three feet, right? And the guy who wrote this article said, it's just awful. I can't believe it's not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> well, listen to this. It powers a job site for about the same amount of time as a hybrid F-150. It better be close to a hydrogen filling station when it does, right? The F-150s run on gasoline. You can buy that everywhere, right? What are they going to do? Carry their supplies of hydrogen with them to a job site? I mean, all this stuff is total fantasy, really, when it comes down to it. And as the reviewer said, it does all these things worse than existing technologies at a significantly higher cost than any. With a dubious environmental advantage, the diesel and none to battery and solar. GM's got this crazy hydrogen 
work truck doesn't go far, right? Probably cost a small fortune. They didn't mention a price. To see as another example of the future that probably will never become the future, right? It's got so many downsides, make your head spin. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.